Hi, I'm Dr. Arpan Gandhi. I head the laboratory services at Delhi and Secondary Center Labs at Dr. Shaw Charity Eye Hospital. I welcome all of you to a video presentation on corneal scraping and staining techniques. Corneal scraping is a very valuable specimen in cases of corneal ulcers. Its examination is the mainstay in the diagnosis and subsequent treatment. It is done under topical anesthesia using a 15 number blade. Scraping is done from the base and the edge of the ulcer using a sharp end of the blade to obtain the maximum yield of organisms. The specimen is inoculated on two slides, one for gram stain and the other for the KOH mount. Two solid media at least, the blood agar and the chocolate agar and four liquid media, namely the non-nutrient agar, SDA, brain, heart, infusion media and thio glycolate broth. There are various culture medias available. This is the OPD demonstration video of corneal scraping procedure. Video is made with the consent of the patient. After explaining the procedure to the patient, an installation of 2 drops of 0.5% paracaine, which is the topical anesthetic drop, corneal scraping is done on the slit lamp under all aseptic precautions. Gentle corneal scraping is done using sharp end of a 15 number blade from the base and edge of the ulcer. Tissue is collected and is inoculated on a clean glass slide. Again using a fresh blade, the procedure is repeated and the tissue inoculated on another clean glass slide. Using a fresh blade, corneal scraping is done and tissue is inoculated on agar plates without breaking the surface into a C shape from outwards to inwards to appreciate the growth of the organisms better. More material is taken and inoculated on Sabarod's dextrose agar taking care that the tip of the blade goes directly into the media and does not touch the culture bottle. The type of selected media used varies according to the type of organism suspected clinically and fresh blades need to be taken for each culture media. Now once the slides and the culture media reach the lab along with the requisition form, the next step is the labeling of the two slides with the MR number or the registration number of the patient. A circle mark is made on the slides for gram stain on the undersurface. Similarly, all culture media are labelled one after the other to avoid pre-analytical errors. Blood agar is incubated in the incubator set at 37 degrees Celsius. Chocolate agar is kept in a candle jar which is also incubated at 37 degrees Celsius. The growth on all media are evaluated from next day onwards every day in the morning for 14 to 21 days depending on the media. All media except for SDA are incubated at 37 degrees Celsius which is incubated in an incubator set at 26 degrees Celsius and the growth is evaluated from next day onwards for a period of 21 days. Potassium hydroxide or KOH Wet mount preparation is done for the demonstration of fungal elements like yeast, hyphae and pseudohyphae. If performed correctly, it can lead to a quick and reliable diagnosis of fungal infection. Potassium hydroxide acts by digesting keratin and causing lysis of epithelial cells, WBCs, RBCs, mucus and debris thereby increasing the visibility of fungal elements. Few drops of 10% weight by volume solution of potassium hydroxide is instilled over the glass slide containing the inoculated specimen and covered by a cover slip. Examination is done by placing the slide on the stage of the microscope first under low power that is 10x. Illumination is reduced by lowering the condenser. And then, high power examination is done under 45x for the presence of fungal hyphae. Next step is the gram staining. The gram stain is a differential stain used to differentiate between gram positive and gram negative bacteria. The principle of the gram staining is based on the difference in the structure of the cell wall. Gram positive bacteria have a th thicker peptidoglycan layer as compared to the gram negative bacteria. The dye 
iodine complex formed after staining is trapped inside this thick layer of gram positive bacteria. They do not get decolorized and retain the primary stain, hence stain purple. Due to the thin peptinoglycan layer, trapping of the diiodine complex does not occur in the gram negative bacteria, which take up the secondary stain and stain pink. Microscopic picture of the purple gram positive bacteria and the pink colored gram negative bacteria is seen. Constituents of the gram stain kit. Crystal violet as the primary stain. Grams iodine is the mordant. Acetone is the decolorizer. And saffron is used as a counter or a secondary stain. The first step is the heat fixation of the inoculated glass slide with gentle heat. It is then flooded with crystal violet which is the primary stain and left for a minute. After a minute, the slide is washed and flooded with Gram's iodine, which is left for a minute. Iodine is washed off and rapid decolorization is done with acetone for just a few seconds, followed by immediate washing. The slide is then flooded with saffron, which is the secondary or counter stain. After one minute, saffron is washed off and slides are air dried. Few drops of oil are put on the slide and examination is done in the microscope, first under the low power 10x and then under the oil immersion lens, the 100x objective. There are various microscopic appearances of the bacteria. Purple colored spherical bacteria or the gram positive cocci can be arranged in grape like clusters, which is suggestive of a staphylococcus, or chains, which is suggestive of staphylococcus. Purple colored rods are the gram positive bacilli. They can be bacillus or short bacilli in cases of Cornibacterium diphtheri in a Chinese letter pattern. The gram-positive branching filaments are seen in Nocardia and Actinomyces. Pink-colored rods are the gram-negative bacilli which can be seen in the anterior bacteria family and Pseudomonas. The gram-negative diplococci are Moxella and Neisseria. The ZN stain is a bacteriological stain which is used to identify the acid fast organisms, namely the Mycobacterium tuberculae and leprae. The Mycobacterium cell wall has a high lipid and a mycolic acid content. This makes the cell wall waxy, hydrophobic and impermeable. The ZN staining uses the basic fusion and the phenol compounds to stain the cell wall. Carbol fusion is the primary stain. Heat acts as a mordant. 20% H2SO4 is the acid fast decolorization colorizer and the methylene blue lofflers is the secondary or the counter stain. Basic carbol fusion strongly binds to the mycolic acid and the lipid cell wall. Addition of acid alcohol along with the heat forms a strong complex that cannot be washed off. The acid fast bacilli take up the red color of the primary dye carbol fusion. Non-acid fast bacteria easily decolorize on the addition of acid alcohol and take up the counter stain dye of methylene blue and appear blue. These are the constituents of the ZN acid fast staining kit. In ZN acid fast staining, the smear prepared on a glass slide is flooded with carbol fusion which is the primary stain. It is intermittently heated. Care should be taken not to allow boiling of the stain or drying of the smear. Carbol fusion is allowed to stand for 5 minutes without further heating. After this, it is washed off. Decolorization is done with acid fast decolorizer for 2 minutes or until no more stain comes off in the washings. This is followed by washing with water. Counter stain for 30 seconds is done with methylene blue. It is then washed. The air dried slide is examined after installation of few drops of oil first under low power and then under oil immersion 100x objective. Mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria are seen as bright red slender rods against the blue background. They are the RNT-CP guidelines for AFB grading. 1% acid fast bacilli staining is used to stain nocardia which is weakly positive. They are seen as long beaded branching filaments. This is an example of a report of a KOH and a gram staining of the patient which has a turnaround time of within an hour. 
and informed to the clinician. The culture report sent on subsequent day. Thank you for your attention throughout the video. Corneal scraping and staining is a very important diagnostic tool for the accurate and timely management of all corneal ulcers. It's a skill which can be acquired and should be acquired by all ophthalmologists for better management of their patients. Thank you.